the last lecture we studied uh, the solution techniques of second order homogeneous linear recurrence relations with constant coefficients what we will see in today's lecture is that the technique that we developed very naturally extends to higher order homogeneous linear recurrence relations with constant coefficients instead of going for a general theory and theorems that take care of any order recurrence relations, we will consider some third order homogeneous linear recurrence relations with constant coefficients and the cases that we will discuss will equip us to deal with any order linear recurrence relations of course, with constant coefficients and of course, homogeneous. Now, to start with let us consider the third order linear recurrence relation given by a n plus 6 times a n minus 1 plus 12 a n minus 2 plus 8 a n minus 3 equal to 0. Now, we note that this is a third order homogeneous linear recurrence relation with constant coefficients. Third order homogeneous linear recurrence relation with constant coefficients. Now, we use the uh, technique that we have developed in the last lecture in exactly the same way we assume that the solution is of the form a n equal to c times r raised to the power n. Then we substitute a n equal to c times r raised to the power n in the recurrence relation to obtain c r to the power n plus 6 times c r to the power n minus 1 plus 12 c times r to the power n minus 2 plus 8 c times r to the power n minus 3 equal to 0. Now, just as before we take out all the c's and since we can very well assume that c is not equal to 0, we get the equation r to the power n plus 
6 times r to the power n minus 1 plus 12 times r to the power n minus 2 plus 8 times r to the power n minus 3 equated to 0. Now, in the next step we take out r to the power n minus 3 uh, which is a common factor of all the terms and write r to the power n minus 3 equal to r cube plus 6 times r square plus 12 times r plus 8 equal to 0 and again a reasonable assumption of non zero of r we get r cube equal to 6 r square plus 12 r plus 8 equal to 0. Now, we immediately observe that this is nothing but r plus 2 whole cube equal to 0. That means, we have a solution r equal to minus 2 repeated thrice. Thus, we obtain a solution a n equal to c times minus 2 raised to the power n. Now, at this point we recall that that for the second order case, we refer to a general theory which says that the general solution of a second order homogeneous linear recurrence relation will be constant times one solution and another constant times another solution which is not a multiple of the first one. Now, in this case we see that we have obtained only one solution and the same theory is a more general one which says that if you have a kth order homogeneous linear recurrence relation with constant coefficients, then you will have the general solution as a linear combination of linearly independent uh, solution uh, whose total number is k. Therefore, in the case of third order uh, equations, we'll be, we, we will have three linearly independent solutions whose linear combination will generate all the solutions. That is, the general solution will be uh, some constant times one of one solution plus constant times another and a constant times a third one where each of them are linearly independent of the other two. This essentially means that we would not be able to find a linear combination that is a constant times one solution plus another constant times another solution becoming equal to the third one uh, for all values of n. Now, in order to get the other solutions, we use the same strategy as before and uh, the final result is very easy to remember. That is, the second solution will be of the type a n equal to c times well it is something different. So, c 1 times n 
minus 2 raised to the power n and the third one will be a n equal to c 2 times n square minus 2 to the power n. Therefore, the general solution will be of the form a n equal to a constant times minus 2 raised to the power n plus another constant times n into minus 2 to the power n plus the third constant times n square into minus 2 to the power n. Therefore, we can club all the constant terms together uh, all the terms involving constant together and take the common factor minus 2 to the power n out to get c plus c 1 n plus c 2 n square within a parenthesis and into 2 to the power minus 2 to the power n. So, this is a general solution of the third order uh, homogeneous linear uh, re uh, recurrenceation that we started with. Now, we can from here very easily guess a general pattern. Suppose I have a recurrence relation of the type a n plus c 1 a n minus 1 plus c 2 a n minus 2 plus and so on up to c k a n minus k equal to 0 where c 1, c 2, c k are constants then the characteristic equation will be of the form r to the power k plus c 1 r to the power k minus 1 plus c 2 r to the power k minus 2 plus and so on. The last but one term is c k minus 1 r plus c k equal to 0. This is the characteristic equation. And suppose there is a root R naught which is repeated, let us say, S times, let me write here. Suppose R naught is a root of the above characteristic equation with S repetitions repeated S times that is technically with 
multiplicity S, then R zero raised to the power n R zero raised to the power n multiplied by n n square R zero raised to the power n and so on up to n to the power s minus 1 r 0 raised to the power n are all solutions of the original recurrence relation and all of them are linearly independent. So, we may write that these are linearly independent solutions of the recurrence relation under consideration so in general what we do is when we have a recurrence relation of this type we consider a trial solution of the form a n equal to c r to the power n and obtain the characteristic equation. We then solve the characteristic equation which is after all uh, a an algebraic equation of certain degree with single variable and after solving in general we will get each solution with some multiplicity. If the multiplicity is 1, then corresponding to that solution, we will get a single solution of the recurrence relation. If the multiplicity is 2, corresponding to the, that solution, we will get 2 solutions. If multiplicity is 3, corresponding to that, we will get 3 solutions, and in general, if the multiplicity is s, we will get s solutions. We will sum all of them uh, taking uh, by multiplying each term by, a, by an arbitrary constant and uh, like that we will get a general solution of this recurrence relation. Now, we will explain what I have just told by using another example. Let us now consider a recurrence relation of the form four a n minus 20 a n minus 1 plus 17 a n minus 2 minus 4 a n minus 3 equated to 0. Now, like before I will take a trial solution as a n equal to c r to the power n 
and substitute a n equal to r to the power n and other uh, values of uh, other values a n minus 1 and a n minus 2 and if we do that we will get the characteristic equation four r cube minus twenty r square plus seventeen r minus four equated to zero. And now if we solve this equation we will see that r is equal to half repeated twice that is half is the is a root of multiplicity, multiplicity 2 and 4. Now, we have to build the general solution. Since the value half is repeated twice, corresponding to that we will have two solutions which are linearly independent to each other one is of course, half raised to the power n, the other one is n times half raised to the power n. Whereas, the lone solution 4 which is not repeated will give us another solution 4 raised to the power n. Now, it is not difficult to see that no solution among these three solutions can be written as a linear combination of the other two solutions for all values of n. Therefore, we can build the general solution of the homogeneous equation as a n equal to a constant let us say capital A times half raised to the power n plus b times n times half raised to the power n and then c times 4 to the power n. If we remember these examples then we will be able to solve any linear homogeneous equation with constant coefficients. Next we discuss the situation when we have non homogeneous recurrence relations. Of course, in this case we will not go much uh, away from what we have done, we will be considering non homogeneous linear recurrence relations with constant coefficients. So, we attach one term here that is linear and another term over here constant coefficients. So, we can 
write a general form of these recurrence relations as a n plus c 1 times a n minus 1 plus c 2 times a n minus 2 plus so on plus c k times a n minus k equated to a function of n. Now, as I have said that this is not really very far away from what we have discussed just now, if we look at it carefully, we will see that this non homogeneous recurrence relation is associated to a homogeneous recurrence relation in a very obvious way and that is why that is by putting f n equal to 0. So, we write that relation as associated homogeneous recurrence relation associated homogeneous recurrence relation is a n plus c 1 a n minus 1 plus c 2 a n minus 2 plus and so on and we go up to c k a n minus k equal to 0. Now, what we say is that what if I get the general solution of the last recurrence relation and write that as a n h. So, a n h is the general solution of the well we can introduce this term homogeneous part so we know that a n h plus c 1 times a n minus 1 raised to the power h plus c 2 times a n minus 2 h like that c k a n minus k h equal to 0. Now, suppose we get a single solution of the non homogeneous equation, which we call a particular solution. Suppose that a n p is a particular solution of the non homogeneous recurrence relation. Okay. Then of course, we know that a n p c 1 a n minus 1 
p plus c 2 a n minus 2 p plus and so on up to c k a n minus k p is equal to 0. Now, we consider these two expressions and add them to get a n h plus a n p plus c 1 times a n minus 1 h plus a n minus 1 p plus c 2 times a n minus 2 h plus a n minus 2 p and so on up to c k times a n minus k h plus a n minus k p equal to 0. Thus, we see that the sum of two solutions that is a particular solution and uh, the general solution gives me a solution of the recurrence relation. So, this is a n h the solution of the homogeneous part and a n p a particular solution which together gives me a solution of the non homogeneous equation. Now, here we note that the general solution is not a single solution, it is essentially a family of solutions that is obtained by uh, varying the constants uh, related to the general solution. And therefore, this uh, a n equal to a n h plus a n p is not a single solution, but a family of solutions. What is very striking is that it can be proved that any solution of the non homogeneous equation of this form can be written in this form that is the general solution with certain values of the constants plus any particular solution. Therefore, if we want to solve a non homogeneous recurrence relation of this type, then we will have to first get the general solution of the homogeneous part and somehow find out a particular solution, we add them together and then we uh, put the initial, va initial values and we will get the constants and that is going to be the solution of that we require. We now take up examples. The first example is a recurrence relation of order 1, that is a first order recurrence relation which is not homogeneous but of course, linear with constant coefficients. So, we have a situation like this where a n uh, minus 3 a n minus 1 is equal to 5 into 3 to the power n. So, 
when we encounter such a such an equ equation uh, we will consider first the homogeneous part which is a n minus 3 a n minus 1 equal to 0. Here as before we put a trial solution if we do that then we will get c r to the power n minus 3 times c r to the power n minus 1 equated to 0 if we take out c and r to the power n minus 1 we are left with r minus 3 equal to 0 that is r equal to 3. Therefore, the general solution of the homogeneous part is given by a n h equal to some constant c times 3 raised to the power n. Now, what about the particular solution? For the particular solution, uh, we have to do some guesswork and one can only get some perfection in the guesswork if one solves several problems from several different sources. Now, let us let me uh, uh, let me explain uh, the situation that we have here. We see in the right hand side we have 5 into 3 raised to the power n. So, somehow we know that the left hand side should be something uh, into 3 raised to the power n. Therefore, what we do here we take a trial solution of the type a n p equal to b n 3 to the power n. Now, we will substitute b n 3 to the power n in the original recurrence relation, we will obtain b n 3 to the power n minus 3 into n minus 1 3 to the power n minus 1 equal to 5 into 3 to the power n. Now, we see that 3 to the power n is a common factor of the left hand side of the of this equation therefore we can write 3 to the power n uh, we have missed one term over here that is b b will be of course here so we will write 3 to the power n into b which is equal uh, which is multiplied by n minus n plus 1 and this is equal to 5 times 3 to the power n. Of course, 3 to the power n gets cancelled from both sides and n gets cancelled therefore, we are left with the value of b which is equal to 1. Therefore, we see that 
a n particular a n p is equal to n times 3 n and therefore, a general solution of the original recurrence relation is given by a n equal to a constant times 3 raised to the power n plus n times 3 raised to the power n, which in turn becomes c the constant plus n times 3 raised to the power n. Now, if this recurrence relation arose from some uh, real world application where people knew that um, A 0 has certain value then they could have substituted the value of A 0 in the general solution to obtain the value of C and then they could have gotten a, a particular solution that uh, agrees with the uh, with the uh, problem or model or a natural phenomena that they were observing. As a last part of this talk, we will solve another non-homogeneous recurrence relation, but this time of second order. Now, let us start with the equation this is a n plus 2 minus 8 a n plus 1 plus 16 a n equal to 8 into 5 raise to the power n plus 6 into 4 raise to the power n. Now, as usual we are going to split this relation into the homogeneous part and the original non homogeneous part. So, homogeneous part is a n plus 2 minus 8 a n plus 1 plus 16 a n equal to 0. We consider the trial solution. A n h equal to a constant times r to the power n, and as usual, we substitute this in the homogeneous equation to obtain a constant c times r to the power n plus 1 minus 8 times constant c r to the power n plus 1 plus 16 times c r to the power n equal to 0 and if we take out c and r to the power n, then we are left with r square minus 8 
r plus 16 equal to 0 that is we obtain the characteristic equation r square minus 8 r plus 16 equal to 0. Of course, we see that this is r minus 4 whole square equal to 0. So, we have 4 as repeated roots of the characteristic equation. Therefore, from what we have discussed already, we can write a n homogeneous is equal to some let us say a times four to the power n plus b times n times four to the power n. Now, we move on to uh, the problem of finding out particular solutions. So, particular solution. Now, we go for an assumption. Now, so we are assuming that the particular solution A n particular is going to be a constant times C uh, going to be a constant C times 5 to the power n plus another constant D times n square uh, into 4, 4 to the power n. Of course, there is a question that how do I arrive at this one? There is no, uh, uh, no rule as such, but one can expect that something like this will happen because we see the right hand side is a linear combination of 5 to the power n and 4 to the power n and then we can uh, if, if we like take 5 to the power n and 4 to the power n and take some coefficients dependent on n and easiest may be n, n square, n cube and like that and we can hit and try to check which gives me a, a, a particular solution. In this case, we know that it will be of this form or right now we assume and we will find out that we are able to obtain the values of C and D by substituting this particular solution in the recurrence relation. If we do that, then we have uh, an expression which is somewhat long. So, let, let me uh, write it down. So, substituting A n particular uh, in the recurrence relation we have C times five n plus two plus d times n plus 2 whole square 4 n plus 2 minus 8 times c 5 n plus 1 plus d times 
n plus 1 whole square 4 n plus 1 plus 16 c 5 raised to the power n plus 16 d n square 4 raised to the power n equal to 8 into 5 raised to the power n plus 6 into 4 raised to the power n. This we obtain directly by substituting in the original equation. Now, what we do here now, uh, uh, what we do after this is collect all the coefficients of 4 raised to the power n and 5 raised to the power n. If we do that, we will obtain well something like this. twenty five C minus forty C plus sixteen C minus eight raised to the power f uh, uh, into five to the power n and then plus sixteen D n plus two whole square minus 32 d n plus 2 n plus 1 whole square n plus 1 whole square and then we will have plus 16 d n square minus 6 4 to the power n equal to 0. Now, this means in turn that this term into 5 raised to the power n is equal to this term into 4 raised to the power ne the negative of this term into 4 raised to the power n for all values of n and this is possible if and only if the individual coefficients are equal to 0. If we do that then we obtain two equations 25 c minus 40 c plus 16 c minus 8 equal to 0, which implies c equal to 8 and the next one involving d reduces to 4 d into 16 minus 8 d into 4 equal to 6 and if we solve it then we will get d equal to 3 by 16. Therefore, at the end we are getting the general solution of the homogeneous sorry the general solution of the non homogeneous equation as a n equal to the homogeneous solution that is a raised to the power 4 n plus b n raised to the power 4 n and then the particular solution of the original equation which is c here c is 8 uh, times 5 to the power n plus 
3 by 16 times n square into 4 to the power n. Now, if somebody gives me the values of a 0 and a 1 that is the uh, initial conditions then we will again have two equations involving a and b and then we can solve those two equations and obtain a solution of the of this uh, recurrence relation. Well, let us try that. So, suppose somebody tells me that a 0 equal to 12 and a 1 equal to 5, then we will have 12 equal to a 0, now put 0, if you put 0 then you will this term will vanish and so will this term and 5 raised to the power n will be 1, 4 raised to the power n when n is equal to 0 will be 1. So, we will have a plus 8 and this will mean that a equal to 4. All right. Now, we consider a equal to n equal to 1, if n n equal to 1, we are told that a 1 is 5 a 1. I already know that a is equal to 4, so I put 4 over here and another 4 which gives me 16 plus, now this is b times 4 plus this is 8 times 5 raised to the power 1, so 8 into 5 is 40 plus 3 by 16 into 4. Now, if we solve this equation, then we will get b equal to minus of 207 by 4. Thus, under this initial conditions, we obtain the solution of the recurrence relation as 4 times 4 raised to the power n minus 207 by 4 n raised to the power n into 4 raised to the power n plus 8 times 5 raised to the power n plus 3 by 16 times n square 4 raised to the power n. This is what we were looking for. Thus, in this lecture, we started